A sinkhole on the south side has a road shut down this noon. Crews have been working for hours to get it fixed. Jonathan Cotto has the latest. And we've got an update on a shooting investigation on the southeast side. The new information just released by police. Still ahead. Live from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. Someone most likely spending the day running from what he or she did overnight. San Antonio police are trying to track that person down after they hit a bicyclist and just kept going. The crash happened on a neighborhood street called Farm Meadows, and that is near Interstate 35 and Poteet Jordanton Freeway. Katrina Weber tells us why neighbors say they had a feeling something like this might happen. Ready to eat meals lay scattered and wasted along the 3300 block of Fair Meadows. They're the cargo a bicyclist was carrying when San Antonio police say he was run down. The 54 year old told officers he was making deliveries one minute, then the next everything went black. He woke up around three this morning in pain. An ambulance carried him to the hospital while investigators carried on figuring out what happened. During the commotion, Alfredo Alvarez Jr.'s dogs woke him up. They were barking, barking. I go, you know what? I better go check. So when I checked, then all of a sudden I saw a fire truck in front. I saw more police cars. Hours later, spray painted markings from police helped him map out some of the details. Police say they learned from someone else that the bicyclist was hit by a gray SUV that kept going. Another neighbor who I spoke with off camera says he was surprised that he slept through this whole thing, but he says he's not exactly surprised that someone was hit. He says drivers speed through here all the time. We saw quite a few that seemed to be going faster than the speed limit. Alvarez, meanwhile, says speed isn't the only problem. And even if you had lights and stuff, I mean, it's still it's, it's a dark street, so it's hard to see people, and especially around that curve right there. Still, he says it's no excuse for a driver not to stop after a crash, and he hopes police quickly catch that person. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A jury now deliberating in a solicitation capital murder trial that we've been following. Angelica Navarro de Paz is facing up to life in prison if found guilty. She's accused of hiring an undercover officer to kill her boyfriend's sister back in 2017. For six days now, the jury has heard testimony, including from Navarro de Paz herself. She did not deny making that deal, but she says she was forced to do it because her life and the lives of her children were being threatened. The jury began deliberating just after 10 this morning after closing arguments. Stay with KSAT 12 and KSAT.com. We will bring you the verdict when it is reached. New at noon, a sinkhole on the south side, stopping drivers and workers right in their tracks. Right now, crews are still trying to get it fixed. This is on Old Pearsall Road between Loop 1604 and Loop 410. And as Jonathan Cotter reports, a maintenance crew actually discovered the sinkhole last night. Drivers taking Old Pearsall Road between 1604 and 410 are being turned away due to a sinkhole right in the middle of the road just before Medio Creek. Texas Department of Transportation representatives say their maintenance crews actually are the ones who made the discovery last night. TxDOT has an office just up the road. San Antonio Water System also responding to the scene. We spoke with a passerby whose job site with Union Pacific is near the sinkhole and says they may not make it into work today. Either way, uh, here we are in a bind and hopefully we can get the fine folks at TxDOT to let us through. And if not, then I guess we'll just have to call our day and start fresh tomorrow. Right now, it's unclear how big the sinkhole is or what caused it. Texas says the road closure will remain in place until the investigation and repairs are finished. Reporting from the southwest side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Looking outside with live cam, uh, another one of those murky days. Uh, they call it June gloom, but it's only May. Yeah, the, the clouds early in the day and then we'll see some sun just like yesterday in the afternoon. The sun did a lot for us yesterday. We had temperatures holding steady in the low 80s. The sun popped out and we jumped up close to 90. So I suspect we'll see a similar situation today. Right now, we're starting to see some peaks of sun here around San Antonio and the temperature is jumping up. We're at 83 now here in town. Here's the setup. You see all this cloud cover across Texas. That's a lot of moisture streaming north out ahead of a storm system, which is situated right here. There's going to be some severe weather today.
today across parts of Oklahoma, North Texas, and we could even see a few storms across our western counties a little bit later today. A little closer look here at that cloud cover. Yeah, we've got some high clouds coming over top of our typical morning low clouds, but there are some peaks of sun starting to show up. Temperatures 83 degrees, as I mentioned at the airport, 88 Stinson, 70 still in parts of the hill country, 77 right now, Bernie stage. There's that risk of severe weather today. It's out west, Rock Springs, Brackenville, Del Rio. That's where we could see a couple of storms. They should not move far enough east to affect San Antonio. I think San Antonio by and large stays dry today. Now things do change a little bit tomorrow with some better rain chances in the forecast. Those temperatures make it up to about 89 this afternoon. Some places could get near 90, but this this is nothing compared to that weekend forecast. We'll update that for you and time out those rain chances tomorrow coming up. Thank you, Justin. We want to give you an update this noon. Police are now saying that the victim in a southeast side shooting has died. However, the trouble started last night at an apartment complex on Bullmore Drive near Dollar Hyde Avenue. Police tell us four men were talking in the parking lot when one of them pulled out a gun. And that's when that person started shooting one of the bullets at a 20 year old man in the head. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. It is unclear if the victim was the intended target or if he was just caught in a crossfire. Police say they don't have any information on a potential suspect. And a suspect in a downtown stabbing investigation taken away in handcuffs near the scene. This comes after the victim was able to get help from a VIA police officer. San Antonio police say that the victim and a suspect got into an argument around 4.30 this morning near I-10 and West Commerce Street. But at some point, the suspect pulled out a knife and stabbed the victim. The victim waved down a VIA officer and gave them a description of the suspect. Police were then able to find the person and take them into custody. The victim taken to the hospital in critical condition. The San Antonio Food Bank is hoping for some help from the community. They are looking at a lot of empty shelves in their warehouse. Some are already a busy time for them with children out of school. However, the food bank says donations are down, but demand is up because of inflation. Here's some of the items that the food bank could use. Non-perishable items, things like peanut butter, jelly, rice, and beans. If you would like to help, you can just leave the items in your mailbox. The U.S. Postal Service is going to pick them up for its Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive. That takes place next Saturday, May 14th. And happening right now, an event underway to help local military veterans access some of the resources they need, including information about health care and housing assistance. It's all taking place at Wonderland of the Americas Mall on Fredericksburg Road right now. Bear County Precinct 2 Commissioner Justin Rodriguez says the event also includes a job fair connecting veterans with several industries, including manufacturing, robotics and law enforcement. Rodriguez says events like this one are in high demand. When we talk to our um, our folks at our military and veteran service center office, um, they help with over 3,000 claims uh, over the past 12 to 18 months. Uh, we know too that you know we haven't had the opportunity to get together like this because of COVID. Uh, we did our first one back in 2019. So this is, uh, I, I think there's probably some opportunities here where maybe veterans have had questions, maybe they couldn't get through to uh, either my office or someone else's office. Uh, so I think it's probably a lot of demand out there. As he said, it's the second year for the event and they plan to bring it back each year. Today's event ends again in about an uh, hour and a half, two hours at two o'clock. And more help for military families. San Antonio is Military City USA and military families play a big role here in our community. Friday, Military Spouse Appreciation Day. Man, as Max Massey shows us, the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce is hosting a resource fair to help our local families make San Antonio their home. I love San Antonio. Um, I will have been here seven years this October, the longest I've lived anywhere in my entire life. Lori Stinson is a former military spouse who over the last few years has moved her and her family a lot. San Antonio really welcomed us. It was friendly. It was uh, definitely had a lot of resources for us. My children were welcomed uh, with open arms, uh, got into athletics and everything else. So it was a, a very welcoming experience. The San Antonio Chamber of Commerce is welcoming other military families this Friday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Endeavors Veterans Wellness Center. Fair is a way that we can connect our military spouses with the resources that they need, the childcare, the 
education, the career opportunities. You know, moving frequently means that we don't establish roots anywhere. And many times we're moving where we're not close to family. We there are about 40,000 military families here in San Antonio, and they're looking to make the city their home. Now that can have huge economic implications. The military is a large economic driver to San Antonio, um, huge economic impact on our city um, all over. Julie Ring with the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce tells me this fair will include everything from jobs to schools, even health care. For the missions that are here, for the service members who are here, for the families who are here. And we're hosting this resource fair for military spouses to connect our business community with the resources that military spouses need. As for Lori, her advice to families in and around San Antonio get involved. 75% of our military families living off the installation, it is vital for them to get involved in the community. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. $81,000, that's how much money is now going to help some San Antonio children stay active and healthy. A marketing and advertising company made the donation to San Antonio Sports this morning. The contributions are going to benefit the I Play After School program. It offers children skill-based instruction in soccer, track, volleyball, basketball, and tennis. Russ Bookbinder, president and CEO of San Antonio Sports, was at the event where he confirmed, yes, he is leaving the organization. San Antonio Sports has been really rewarding over the last 10 years, but um, as you may know, I'm, I'm married to my wife, Tammy. She's got MS. Uh, we both dealt with this for a long time. It's just a great time for us to go to be with her family in Waco. Bookbinder says he is looking forward to the next chapter of his life. Still coming up this half hour, the Warriors and Grizzlies series getting a little physical. Just ask Draymond Green's face, or was that just some bad acting? Larry Mears with more on that coming up in sports. A mural that celebrates San Antonio's rich culture now has a new home and a new purpose, where you can find this artwork after the break. A mural that was created to celebrate San Antonio's tricentennial now has a new home. It's now at the Pre-K for SA building on the west side. This mural entitled in Interwoven, first installed at Houston Street and Navarro downtown. It was taken down, though, in 2020 after the tricentennial celebrations. But now the city's bringing it back to life at Pre-K for SA. The hope is that it'll inspire youth there to enjoy art and educate them about art. San Antonio artist behind the mural explained the inspiration for her mural, Real People Living in Our Community. I was working with the San Antonio Se Center for Refugee Services. They have a sewing circle and um, I got together with several of the women that are part of that sewing circle. They're refugees and immigrants that now call San Antonio their home. And we were working on some art projects. So when the city came to me to work on um, a mural for the city, I decided to make those women the subject of the mural. And you can find that mural at the Pre-K for SA West Education Center. That's in the 1200 block of Enrique M. Barrera. Parkway. Looking outside with live cam, the clouds sticking around like they did yesterday. Um, enjoy 82 degrees because in a couple of days you won't be seeing that. <laughs> That's the thing. Out. The clouds really help to keep the temperatures down, so we can't complain too much. Those clouds go away this weekend, and that allows those temperatures to really skyrocket. Uh, the aquifer is down four tenths of a foot to 646.7 today. It, it continues to fall, and in your pollen count. Good news here, everything is low. This is the first time we've had everything in the low category since late March. Molds, grass, oak, macan, all low. Uh, we've got some storms possibly out west today. A few more coming up uh, tomorrow, too. We'll take a look at that forecast for you. Coming up. Driving to work this morning, rain. I yeah. mean, like like actual rain coming down right on the truck. Wow. Right on the windshield, Where windshield wipers going back and forth. Right there at 281, like north of. Good north for of the you. River. 
Comal County. Good for those folks. Yeah. It's like every little bit we can get, right? Wow. Uh, we, we did have a couple showers this morning. We have a, a few more out there right now. Mostly, most of this is really pretty light. We're starting to see the sun pop out, so we know that temperatures are going to get pretty toasty this afternoon. We'll start with live cam, and we'll show you those uh, cloudy skies. But as I was looking at live cam just a few minutes ago, the sun was actually trying to pop out there as we look down 410. So it's it's uh, it's trying 83 degrees at the airport, 88 Stinson, 85 Kelly, 82 at Randolph. Uh, southeast Julie winds anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusting with those temperatures already in the upper 80s around Stinson. It's no doubt we'll get up close to 90 there at the airport. We're thinking upper 80s later today. And of course, it is extremely humid. Dew points are in the 70s. That is uh, oppressive air, and, and this moisture is really surging back in now with a warm front that is moving north. And looking at the latest from the uh, Storm Prediction Center, it looks like this area here may get a tornado watch pretty soon. Now, this is all north of us. Most of the severe weather today is going to be north of us, but parts of Texas will be under the gun later today as this dynamic system moves in from the west. Right now, there's not much out there. A little cluster of storms across parts of northeastern Oklahoma and into Missouri, but it's mostly just cloud cover here around Texas for right now. A little closer look at our area. There are a few spotty showers here and there, and I should point that out. Most, uh, again, uh, of it is is very light, but uh, that'll move south to north across the area. You can see the, the cloud cover here starting to see some high clouds move in over top of some morning low clouds. Temperatures 75 Bandera, 78 in Uvalde, 85 New Braunfels, 82 in Seguin. We have seen a little bit of sun there. Uh, the radar does show some of those very light spotty showers. They're very quick moving. You may have to use the windshield wipers briefly and then these showers move right along. Here is your Star Wars Day forecast. If you missed it earlier, we should, <laughs> we have the background for Star Wars since it is May 4th. You got to do it. Uh, 82 degrees by 1 p.m., mostly cloudy. 87, 3 p.m., 88 by 4 p.m. And then by 5 p.m., that's our high temperature. 89, 87, 6 o'clock. And we'll start to put in some rain chances overnight. I think by tomorrow morning, we may see a few more showers and storms around the area. Severe weather risk today for our local area is going to be out west. Del Rio, Brackenville, Rock Springs. These storms that develop out there, though, will not make it into San Antonio. The risk, if we do see any storms today, will be hail and gusty winds for those around Del Rio and uh, Rock Springs. By this evening, you see some of those storms, and we'll put a 20% chance out there for that activity. By tomorrow morning, this is 4 a.m., we're starting to see some showers and maybe a few storms pop up. And then by tomorrow morning for the morning commute, a little bit more activity. Then as a weak frontal battery slides, uh, slides a little bit closer, we'll bring our rain chances up to 30%. This lasts through the evening hours. And then by 10 o'clock, a lot of this is scooting east. Sky's clear and they stay clear Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, we're going to lose the cloud cover completely, and that means temperatures are really going to jump up. Severe weather risk tomorrow. It's just isolated for us. Better chances will be to our north and east, but we can't rule out a severe storm or two tomorrow. Very quickly, let me show you the forecast highs for Friday and Saturday. Right now, mid-90s here in San Antonio on Friday. By Saturday, 101. That's what this model is showing. We're forecasting 100, but somewhere in that, that range, 105 in Laredo, 107 in Del Rio, it will be very hot over the weekend. Uh, 96 Friday, as we said, triple digits Saturday, Sunday, even hot going into next week and dry. So really our only chances for rain here are going to come tomorrow, guys. All right. May the 4th be with you. Yes. And also with you, Larry. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I missed the graphic. I need to look at that later. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Okay. Used to it used to be no blood, no foul. <laughs> now they've gone to a whole new level with broken bones. You know, I thought I was watching a <laughs> hockey playoff game yeah. last night. That's how physical this game was between the Warriors and the Grizzlies. I mean, Draymond Green got hit in the eye. Ja Morant got hit in the eye. That foul right there. Steve Kerr said cross the line. And in the WNBA, Nalissa Smith feels at home in Indiana. Coming up. Do you think that was intentional to try to hurt him? I don't know if it was intentional, but it, it, it was dirty. Steve Kerr is talking about this foul called on Dylan Brooks that left Warriors guard Gary Payton the second with a broken elbow in big board sports.
Upset about missing a potential game-winning layup in game one, Memphis Grizzlies guard John Morant was more determined than ever to win game two last night, and the dude put on a show against Golden State, scoring 47 points to match his postseason high to help the Grizzlies tie this series at one game all. Morant finished at the rim in all manners, hanging in the air, avoiding defenders, and making the floater look easy. He scored the last 15 points of the game for Memphis, plus he scored 18 of his 47 in the fourth, and did so after getting punched in the left eye while going for a rebound late in the third quarter. Grizzlies win 106 to 101. So what did Ja think about his performance? Definitely big time. Um, definitely up there. Um, I felt like, you know, this was kind of a must win game for us. And, you know, for me, um, I was frustrated with myself with, you know, missing that layup in game one. Um, had some, you know, friendly words with Steph. Uh, you know, after game one, he came to me and Jaron and said, it's going to be a battle. You know, we're going to have some fun. I was able to, you know, return that message tonight um, saying the same thing. Less than three minutes into the game, Grizzlies' Dylan Brooks was ejected with a flagrant foul, too, after hitting Warriors guard Gary Payton a, the second across the head while going for the ball. Now, Payton went down hard to the court where he stayed for a couple minutes. X-rays confirm Payton suffered a fractured left elbow. Playoff basketball is going to, it's supposed to be physical, you know, everybody's going to compete, everybody's going to fight for everything, but there's a code in this league, there's a code that players follow um, where you, you never put a guy's season slash career in jeopardy by taking somebody out in midair and clubbing him across the head. He broke the code. Dylan Brooks broke the code. That's how I see it. Warriors' Draymond Green went down a couple minutes after that, taking an elbow to his right eye. He returned for the second quarter after getting stitches for a cut near that eye. A Boston dominated Milwaukee 109-86 last night to even that playoff series in one game all. Boston had 10 steals and forced 18 turnovers, resulting in 15 points. So with two preseason games to her credit, Indiana Fever rookie Alyssa Smith will now prep for her first regular season game. Smith, the second overall pick in the draft, feels at home because of head coach Marianne Stanley. As soon as I came in, she, you know, introduced herself and we talked about, you know, our plans for this year. Like, many people aren't approachable like that. So for her to, you know, come to me and just, you know, just talk, like, it, it just takes a chip off your shoulder. Like, you can just relax because it's like, you got people that care about you here. Smith and the Fever open the regular season Friday night at the Washington Mystics. Be fun to watch your career this year. Absolutely time. will. Right. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Larry. You've heard, likely, of a snapping turtle, but what about a slapping turtle? A comedian caught the moment a turtle started slapping another turtle. Why a zoo official says it's actually part of a mating ritual, we'll explain in the next half hour. And it is a day to celebrate Mexico's victory over the French, the Battle of Puebla, and it's tomorrow. We're talking about Cinco de Mayo, a day rich in Mexican culture and, of course, plenty of food. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your size, Marilyn Moritz has some menu ideas that are both delicious and healthy. North Korea fired off another ballistic missile this morning. That is according to South Korea and Japan. The two countries say it was launched into the waters east of the Korean Peninsula. Japan's defense ministry says the missile flew over 300 miles. It comes just days after North Korean leader Kim Jong-un vowed to bolster his nuclear arsenal. Thousands of immigrants in the United States will automatically have their work permits extended for at least six more months. Immigrants allowed to work in the U.S. must renew their work permits on a regular basis. The Department of Homeland Security says that this move is to address the backlog of renewals. The office estimates around 87,000 applicants are up for renewal right now or soon will be, and the process often takes years to complete. The new rule intended to try to keep immigrants from losing their jobs as they wait for approval. Now to latest on the war in Ukraine, Russian forces escalating their attacks across the country. But 100 residents of Mariupol are safe this morning after finally being allowed to evacuate after weeks in underground shelters. ABC's Ian Panel has more. 
This morning, Russian forces try to expand their attacks across Ukraine, hitting the western city of Lviv. At the besieged steel plants in Mariupol, Russian forces launching an attack on the shattered complex. The remaining Ukrainian fighters making a last stand, with as many as 200 civilians believed to be still taking refuge there. So far, over 150 people have been evacuated from the steel plant and are now safely in Ukrainian-controlled territory. Anna was among those able to flee. She and her family were at the plant for two months, taking refuge in a bunker with 30 others. They were constantly shelling us, she says, and during the daytime or nighttime, the kids didn't sleep. They were crying. She didn't think they'd make it out alive. And to the northeast, here in Kharkiv, firefighters rushing to extinguish flames after a Russian strike on a children's funfair park in the city. And every day, the number of the dead and injured grow. 15-year-old Kira was with two friends when she was badly wounded by shrapnel as a shell landed nearby. Are your friends who were injured, are they, they OK? Um, no. She says, one of my friends has already left the hospital, but the boy she was with died. This is the trauma so many Ukrainians must live with in a country where childhood can now be dangerously short. Europe is proposing a phased ban on Russian oil by the end of the year, part of a sweeping new round of sanctions aimed at Russia. All 27 member nations would have to approve this proposal, but with Russia believed to be getting hundreds of millions of dollars a day from oil exports to Europe, it could deal a significant blow to Russia's economy and its war machine. Ian Panel, ABC News in Kharkiv region, Ukraine. Looking outside with live cam, we still got the clouds, but it almost looks like the sun's about to break through. Yeah, th there'll be some sun here there throughout the afternoon, and we've also seen a few sprinkly showers here and there too, so that, that's a possibility. I want to show you the big picture across Texas because we're still awaiting that tornado wash box, which I think will come here within the next half hour or so, and that's going to be across North Texas, so we're talking Abilene up to Wichita Falls, and that's going to be a place where there could be quite a bit of severe weather this afternoon, and we're starting to see a few thunderstorms break out there in western parts of Oklahoma. So it's this region here that's going to really be under the gun, not us. Uh, we are expecting maybe a couple of thunderstorms out west today, but nothing here in San Antonio. There's a severe weather risk outlook. And uh, yes, Wichita Falls up to Oklahoma City. That's kind of the area that uh, the Storm Prediction Center will be watching most closely as we, uh, we get into the uh, afternoon hours. A little closer look here, we've got the isolated risk out west, places like Lakey, Rock Springs, Brackenville. You could see a strong storm or two this afternoon should they pop up. As far as temperatures go, we're thinking upper 80s here in San Antonio. It's going to be a warm one, and we have to contend with that humidity too, so it feels a little bit warmer than these actual air temperatures. But 83 Fair Oaks Ranch today, 85 Canyon Lake, 87 up there in San Marcos, 87 in Seguin. And yes, we will see some sun from time to time. A little better chance of rain tomorrow. We'll look at the computer models and show you that once again. And we'll talk about these triple digits over the weekend. Where does that rank as far as earliest 100 degree day? We have the answer here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. A video going viral after someone caught a turtle slap, slapping, not snapping, slapping another turtle on camera. How reptile experts are explaining this as part of a courting ritual. And Astros manager Dusty Baker hits an historic milestone. Larry Mears with that coming up in sports. After some back and forth, Dolly Parton will officially be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We'll take a look at some of the other artists who will be honored as well after the break. Despite her objections, iconic singer Dolly Parton will be inducted into this year's Hall of Fame. Back in March, she had asked that her name be withdrawn from the list of nominees. And at the time, she said she felt like it would be taking away from a rock artist who deserved this more. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Foundation, though, declined to take Dolly out of the running. And she later said that if fans voted her in, she would, quote, just say thanks. Also making the list of inductees this year, Eminem, Duran Duran, Lionel Richie, Pat Benatar, The Eurythmics, and Carly Simon. Comedian Dave Chappelle is okay after he was tackled during a performance at the Hollywood Bowl last night. Chappelle was performing his stand-up routine at the amphitheater as part of the Netflix is a Joke Festival at the time. Security guards then chased down and overpowered the attacker. Actor Jamie Foxx was in the wings of the stage, and Chappelle thanked him for responding to the attack. Fellow comedian 
Chris Rock was there as well and jokingly asked if the attacker was Will Smith. Chappelle was able to continue his performance. Meanwhile, the man who rushed the stage was taken away in an ambulance. Okay, it's spring fling season, and not just for humans, apparently. Turtles are also on the hunt for love. But their courtship looks a little different. CNN's Jeannie Mose has more. Forget snapping turtles. This is a slapping turtle. No wonder the video has gone viral, racking up millions of views. Have these two been watching too much Oscars coverage? It really feels like slapping is really uh, in this season. Seems to be the move. Philadelphia comedian Jamie Pappas was wandering the Heinz Wildlife Refuge when she spotted the turtles. What looked like little siblings, like slap fighting. These turtles aren't just slap happy. What's foremost in their minds is foreplay. Reptile experts say it's spring breeding season and this is a courting ritual. He's tickling her around her head and her neck. Um, and he's using his claws to demonstrate to her that he would be a good quality mate. And that he has nice claws. Yeah, that he has nice long claws. Long claws. <laughs> Whatever he was doing, it seemed to work. She was definitely following him. One Twitter user described the video as actual footage of me attempting to flirt in eighth grade. Jamie has posted plenty of comedy videos, but this is the one that broke through. What if I end up owing my whole career to turtle foreplay, she tweeted. Some couldn't resist adding sound effects. This is the kind of courting that leaves even a hot-to-trot female turtle. Shell-shocked. Genimos, CNN. New York. Maybe so. they have a long, happy relationship. Oh, man. I think Jamie Pappas has some material <laughs> to last for a while. No kidding. Oh, man, social media these days brings you all sorts of stuff, doesn't I like it? the sound effects. We I learned something. There I you go. I learned a lot. We learned yeah. something. <laughs> 83 so far today. 74 was the low this morning. The records are 99 and 42 set back in 1984 and 2013. Uh, we do have those rain chances tomorrow. The heat over the weekend. We break down that seven day forecast for you coming up. So before we get to the hot weekend, we might have a little bit of a chance for some rain tomorrow. That's what I understand. If I've been listening right, I don't and know. And I, I want to give everybody a, a tip. Uh -oh. If you're buying flowers for mom oh, here we go. or your wife, okay. it's going to be really hot. Do not leave them in the car. Hmm. That's not where you store your gift for mom. Okay. Chocolates, flowers. No bueno. That's actually some really good information that I had wow. not thought of. Well, I, I'm just telling you. Good. I've been good there. Stuff. Appreciate you. Somebody, right. she wouldn't be saying that if it hadn't happened. Because you hint, universal. Hint. <laughs> right. Somebody <laughs> okay. along the way did My something. My kids mm. did that. They didn't realize it. And they, they bring in all these. Was it flowers or chocolate? It was flowers. Oh, okay. Well, chocolate candy. applies too. Yeah, yeah, it does. Leave that in there uh, either. Oops. Good to know. Some good information. Mother's Day, yes, is going to be very toasty. So my hope is that we get some rain before we get there. Uh, the rainfall totals for the year have not been that great. Here in San Antonio, we're at 3.75 for the year. That's about five inches below the average. And Del Rio's at one inch, about three inches below the average. Boy, we could really use the rain. Austin is a little bit above average. They've been doing okay there. Rain chances this week. Really, it's just tomorrow for us here in San Antonio. There's our 30% chance, and we should see some isolated storms, a couple strong ones mixed in there. But after that, we take rain chances out. The heat cranks up. It's going to feel a lot like summer as we get into the weekend and early next week. There's the look outside. We did have some sun earlier as we were looking down 410, so it's been kind of off and on this cloud cover. Mostly cloudy, officially reported at the airport now, 83. Southeasterly winds have been gusty, gusting to uh, up into the 20s, but right now sustained at 17. Our dew point is at 70, so the air is extremely thick. And the radar and satellite picture shows that we do have a lot of cloud cover that continues to stream north, a lot of moisture streaming north out ahead of our storm system here which is just now starting to get cranked up. We mentioned some of those storms there in western parts of Oklahoma, likely going to see some severe weather here over the next couple of hours up there along the Red River. For us, it's been mostly just some very light spotty showers, but these uh, high clouds starting to thin out and some of these morning low clouds starting to thin out. So we should get some more sun 
and that'll get us into the upper 80s just like yesterday for high temperatures it'll feel a little bit warmer than that because there is so much humidity out there 88 degrees Pleasanton 77 Kerrville a little closer to look 79 Boulevard 78 up there in comfort 76 Bandera here's the forecast and those clouds break up temperatures uh, jump into the upper 80s 89 is what we're forecasting here in San Antonio there will be some 90s on the map bottom line warm and humid for all of us where does that humidity go from here? Well, it jumps up a little bit more tomorrow. That helps to generate some of that uh, shower and storm activity. But as we get into Friday, the dew points drop off. And over the weekend, they'll be fairly low. So yes, it will be hot, but it is, it's always a trade-off, right? We lose the humidity, but then the air temperature goes up and it is gonna be awful warm for Mother's Day. Our forecast shows a couple of storms out west today. 20% chance there could be a couple strong storms out there this evening. Nothing here in San Antonio, but that changes overnight. We should start to see a few pop up showers and storms during the overnight hours and then into early tomorrow morning. So the morning commute could be a little bit wet in spots. And as we look at uh, tomorrow noontime, some showers, maybe a couple storms showing up. That weak frontal boundary gets closer and that should be enough to help to develop a few more thunderstorms during the late afternoon and evening hours, about a 30% chance of rain. After that, that all moves east. We clear out. The severe risk tomorrow, we're right on the edge of things. It's, it's isolated. I, I don't think our chances of seeing a, uh, severe weather are great, but it is there. And so we have to point that out, that the better chances for severe weather are going to stretch from Waco, Tyler, Shreveport, up to Little Rock. Mother's Day weekend, that uh, is kind of the big story now. 100 degrees both Saturday and Sunday. You see the records there. And if you're curious, our average first 100 degree day is June 30th. So this would be ahead of schedule. Our earliest 100 degree day we've ever seen was back in 1996. It actually happened in February. Uh, the latest 100 degree day is September 6th. That was just last year. But we have had several years where we haven't hit 100 at all. So that gives you some perspective there. We are a little bit ahead of schedule when it comes to this kind of heat. 87 tomorrow, 30% chance of rain. 96 Friday, 100 Saturday and Sunday with sunny skies and still hot and dry going into next week. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. You know, a few years ago when I was in high school, if you had an offensive lineman that was 200 pounds, <laughs> what are you laughing at? Just a few years ago. Just a couple years ago. Okay. I just, yeah. Yeah. Several decades ago. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> had an off. <laughs> I don't know. You got a bunch of big guys. That's right. Now. That's all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they grew. Yes. Hey, I'll tell you what. Jerry yeah. Jones was upset about the playoff loss of the 49ers yeah. because the 49ers <laughs> out big to the Cowboys. So what did Jerry Jones do? He drafted a bunch of big guys. Yes, Dallas Cowboys added some size, and the Houston Texans. Well, they drafted several guys out of the Houston area. Coming up. <laughs> Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. One of the things that stands out in the 2022 NFL Draft for the Dallas Cowboys is size. It started with their first pick at number 24. Offensive lineman Tyler Smith, who checks in at 6'5", 325 pounds. Fifth round pick, offensive lineman Matt Walesko is 6'8", 312. And fellow fifth rounder John Ridgway, a defensive tackle out of Arkansas, comes in at 6'5", 321 pounds. This all has to do with what happened to the Cowboys against the 49ers, who they lost in the first round of the NFL playoffs. The Niners held the Cowboys to just 45 yards rushing. They got pushed around, and Jerry Jones didn't like it. I'm really uh, good uh, because uh, I've always, uh, on our running, on our defense against a running game, have always held my breath on getting big boy in there. And so this is a, this is a, a, a real statement in my mind. Uh, with uh, Dan and with Mike as to how we're going to address the run game when we get into the playoffs, which we're sure to have. Now here's something you may not have realized about the Texans NFL draft. One third of their nine picks are from Houston. That includes former Aggie offensive lineman Kenyon Green, who played for Atascosa High School. Defensive back Jalen Petrie out of Baylor, who suited up for Stafford High School. And offensive lineman Austin Deculus out of LSU. He went to Cy Fair High School. In fact, two of the Texans' first three picks are from the Bayou City. So what does Nick Casario have to say about that? It's great, but you know, just it's not just because they're from Houston. It's because they're good players. That have, look, I would say this: like, there's a lot of good football players in the state of Texas, and specifically in the city of Houston. So, I mean, it's probably a good place to start. So, you know, the fact that they're the homegrown here is probably more. I mean, their families are probably more ecstatic than I would say anybody else. 
Time to play ball. Houston hosting Seattle last night where Dusty Baker made history. Bottom of the fourth, no score until this solo home run from Jordan Alvarez to center field and it does one to nothing. Astros his eighth touch them all of the season. Top of the ninth. Julio Rodriguez strikes out to end the game, and the Astros win four to nothing. That's career win 2,000 for Astro skipper Dusty Baker, becoming the 12th manager in MLB history to win 2,000 games and the first black manager to reach the milestone. Well, it feels great. Uh, thank you. Thanks to everybody. Thanks for all the support. Uh, you know, thanks to the players because I couldn't do it without them and. Rangers at the Phillies, top of the six, tied to three. Zach Rex pokes one down the right field line, and that's good for a two-run double, putting the Rangers on top for good. And Texas wins six to four, their third straight win. David Ursula. Thanks, Larry. Just don't get big boyed. Boyed. Boyed too. He said boyed, and then he said big. See, that was that. Uh, yeah. Oh All right. my. One of what? my one of what? my favorite memories was putting. Fiona's hair into a Princess Leia yes. bun contraption. <laughs> yes, Remember yes. That? And you knew exactly how to do it. They looked great that year. <laughs> they used to do that all the time at LSU when she was going there. So anyway, <laughs> Get yes, ready to the, blast off to a galaxy far, far away. And may the fourth be with you. And of course, one of the biggest stars of all the Star Wars movie, R2D2 himself. Welcome. Yes. He is here. Yep, there you go. What was that? Get your agent on the phone. Exactly. Well put. <laughs> and, of course, as famous as he is, you know, the famous spaceship was the Millennium Falcon, mm -hmm. and Robert Trejo from Zoom Imagination has not quite a Millennium Falcon. Not quite, but pretty close. I mean, this is Twister. He is a peregrine falcon, which is the fastest animal in the world. So, basically, he can jump to light speed. Yes. There, All the there, speeds. Yes, yes indeed. <laughs> All yeah. the speeds. All right. And, of course, if you like collectibles, boy, do we have a great place to tell you about where you can find all sorts of really cool stuff, including some of the rarest and some of the most sought after. We're gonna take Baby Yoda out Makes of this Makes me box. wonder how much my Darth Vader piggy bank is at home. And the big question today is, if you could be any Star Wars character, mm -hmm. what would it be? Hmm. Mm, you are owning this look right now, I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay, I'm all thinking. that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. Thank you, R2. All right, well, now let's look at the forecast. We're at 86 now on our way up close to 90 this afternoon. We'll see a chance of storms coming up tomorrow. Uh, slight chance, some showers in the morning and then a few thunderstorms in the afternoon. After that, though, dries out. Temperatures go way up there. 100 on Saturday, 100 on Sunday. Thank you, Justin. We're going to keep it simple. May the 4th be with you. SA Live starts right now. Fight like a Jedi Master. See if we can match up to this award-winning lightsaber expert. Channel your inner child and get creative with May the 4th painting classes. We have all the details today on SA Live. Their treats fit for a queen. We're going to tell you how you can win free Star Wars cupcakes. It's all today on a special edition of SA Live. Coming to you from a galaxy far, far away, it's SA Live's May the 4th Be With You special. Hello and happy May the 4th Be With You Day on this very special edition of SA Live. From lightsaber battles to Baby Yoda, we are taking you to a galaxy far, far away. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Darth Maul Osterhage. I love this look <laughs> on you, all right? And I'm Queen Fiona Dalla. And, you know, you can see, you know, we love the Star Wars characters, but, you know, we want to know if you could be any Star Wars character, which one would you be? Um, I think I'm going to have to go with Darth Vader. Okay. Kind of, yeah. you know, second cousin once removed from Darth Maul or something like that. So mm -hmm. I just, you know, the whole... Millennium Vulcan and the voice too. So what about you? <laughs> oh, I'm loving this one on this you. Is, this, this is so good on you right now. Thank you, by the way, to Nerdy, Nerdy Cat, Cat Makeup. Makeup. Yes. For after themselves. Yes, yeah. of course. For Who would you want to be? Finishing the transformation. I'm kind of liking look, this one. You look good as a princess. <laughs> yes. I, I'm like I'm liking the hairdo up here too. So <laughs> Alright, so let us know at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter. You may see your answer a little later in the show. Okay, on our journey across the galaxy, we are going to meet friends and foes. Five Star Wars characters are 
are ready to help in our adventure, but we have to guess who they are, and you can play along at home to see how well you know your Star Wars trivia. All right, first up, see if you can guess this one. One of the movie's most beloved heroes, this character was in all nine major Star Wars episodes and is said to be George Lucas's favorite Star Wars character. Ooh, who could it be there behind hmm. the curtain? I, I don't have know. no idea. I can barely see. <laughs> Come on out. It is R2-D2. All right. He's supposed to be George Lucas's favorite character. R2 has saved the day in every movie at least once from saving Padme's life in Attack of the Clones to saving Luke, Han, and <laughs> Leia from being crushed in a trash compactor. Thank you, R2-D2. What would we do without him? I know. And your and your sidekick C-3PO, of course, but you're the the real star of the show, right? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. That's a yes. That is a yes. You speak R two D two. All right, next, this character built their own lightsaber. It is powered by a cracked kyber crystal and uses cross guards as an exhaust vent. Who, Who could, could it, it be? be? All right, ladies and gentlemen. It is. Kylo Ren, the son of Leia and Han, who falls to the dark side and is the leader of the Knights of Ren. Welcome to the show, yes. Kylo. Yes, okay. Good to see you. <laughs> All right, next, this character's famous hairstyle was inspired by Mexican revolutionaries. Who could that be, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's Princess Leia! Yes, indeed, women soldiers in the Mexican Revolution wore their hair in the double bun, so it's fitting that a freedom fighter like Leia, of course, should replicate the style. Never knew that before. Learned <laughs> something new. Welcome, Princess Leia. Oh, and Baby Yoda. And it is, uh, let's see, next character is part of the sect of covert force sensitive killers secretly founded by Darth Revan. They were largely responsible for carrying out the first Jedi purge. Please welcome. It's an evil Sith assassin. The Sith assassin's primary purpose is to kill or kidnap a Jedi. Oh, look there on the ground. It's like a little evil R2. Ooh, it's like an R2 sidekick oh, over he's there. coming so. for you. All right, well, our last character is a member of the Galactic Empire's military. They are the upper echelon of the Empire who lead the fight against the Rebellion. Who could it be? Oh, it's an Imperial officer! Imperial officers were ambitious, ruthless, and follow Emperor Palpatine's plans to destroy the Rebellion. Welcome all, thank you so much for being here. And At our ease. Imperial Officer is also president of the Star Wars Society of San Antonio, Peter Gonzalez. Welcome, sir, and thank you all look fantastic. Great costumes and everything. Thank you, thank you for having us. So this is the day you wait for every year, right? <laughs> Pretty much every year. <laughs> May 5th, we're already starting planning for the next year. So. Yeah, this is your Super Bowl. <laughs> Pretty okay. much. All right, so you're all members of the Star Wars Society in San Antonio. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, the club was founded back in 1999 by myself and my friend Larry Ramirez, and we may basically brought this out so a place for fans, by fans. So this way we can go out, spread some, some Star Wars love out, to, out into the community. And you support a lot of nonprofits too, right? Yes. One of our biggest ones we always support would be the San Antonio Food Bank. We've done lots of events with them throughout the year. Plus, we've done a lot of stuff with Special Olympics. We've done uh, food drives. We've done uh, uh, stuff for uh, what do you call it? Uh, for, for schools. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things like that. And special mm -hmm. needs groups special as needs well. Groups, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so those are some of the nonprofits that you support. How can someone join? Easily. All you have to do is go to our Facebook groups page and just join from there. Star Wars Society many, San Antonio. How many members do you have, approximately? Well, uh, when we did the, uh, the King William Parade uh, last month for Fiesta, we had about close to 30 members who were there for the parade route, on the, doing the parade. And last but not least, your favorite movie is? Empire Strikes Back. Uh, oh, really? Oh, yes. oh. <laughs> the, the Empire wins in that one. So. Well, but, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll give, I mean, I'll give get, it to you since right, you're part well, of the Empire. All right, we get Empire. it. Why? Well, look who you're dressed okay. as, okay? Well, you can see members of the Star Wars Society of San Antonio at the Victory Dance for the Special Olympics right. next Saturday, May 14th at Morgan's Wonderland. For more information, just go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab.
Now our journey continues and we begin our Jedi training. It's something you can actually do here in the Alamo City. We may not have a Jedi temple, but we do have a Star Walker. Yes, indeed. Mike Star Walker, who is a Jedi master. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh. That was quite the introduction to yourself. There. Right? Oh, <laughs> anyway, great one. Well, welcome. Yes. yes. So we, Hello so there. Oh, like that. Hello there, everyone. We bow like this. Okay. So how there. long have you been a Jedi master and a trainer in the art of oh. the lightsaber? I've been training in this for five years now. Wow, yeah. okay, so how did you learn to lightsaber fight? Uh, there's a group called Saber Guild. It's a nonprofit organization that raises money for charity with fight choreography. And they perform at events like Comic Cons and they raise money for, you know, all kinds of charities. Okay, show us that your, your initial bow was great. Show us a couple of uh, moves here. Oh, just some flourishes yeah. that you want to learn? Yes, yes. Okay, I'd say we, we should start with the basic like figure eight. Okay. okay. It's a flourish, so that's just going to be laid on this side of your body and then this side of your body. Oh, Whoop. you I guys might want to spread yeah, out. Yeah, we need to spread out. Hold on, <laughs> All right, hold so on. Follow me here, yeah? Try not to trip over my robe. Okay. So this side of your body. So, yeah. And then, okay. once you get the hang of it, you try to get it more in just your wrist and not your arm. Yeah, you guys are doing great. <laughs> and then, Mike, you look legit. <laughs> it's yeah. it's doing the baton in, in high school. Yeah. No, I never did. <laughs> it's from baton in high school. Cool, okay. cool. All right. All right, what's another one? Okay, well, I'd say we should get down to some fight choreography, right? Okay, okay. Okay, right. so I'm going right. to teach you some blocks. Okay. Normally, there's eight attacks and defense, but we're just going to go do five of them. We're going to do one, two, three, four, and eight. Okay. So this is your starting stance, and this would be a one. You're blocking this shoulder. Two three, and four. Yeah. So let's okay. do that one more time. Give okay. you guys some space so you can back up. So one, two, three, four. Ooh. Yeah. Great. Right. <laughs> uh, next is uh -huh. what we call an eight, and that's a head strike. So to block that, okay. you just bring it up like this. Yeah. So okay. let's go through the whole sequence. Okay. So we have one, one two, two, three, three Four, four, and then eight. Yeah. And then to attack that, we just swing out one, two, three, four, and eight. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it's you do it from each side. You go this way and come yeah, around, and then that Yeah, way. you swing okay. it. You want to swing it all the way around like this so it looks flashy. And this is fight choreography. You don't want to actually hurt people, so it lets people know you're coming. That's right, Mike. We don't want yeah. to actually hurt people. Yeah, otherwise. Okay? So, you, yeah. so you don't like hit them no! accidentally? Stop it! Or hit them in the head. Oh, no, no, it. it can happen, but we try to take as much safety precaution as okay. possible. Like, okay, I'm coming. And then, you know, eventually you build the speed and you comfort with your partner. You can really just. So if I come around like that, I don't. No. Okay, so yeah, that was a one. That was a great one. That yeah. was a one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I did good. So, see? Yeah. That's great. Okay. All right, now, do you teach others interested in learning? Yeah, okay. I teach uh, anybody. Uh, they just, uh, if you DM me on Instagram, uh, you want to meet up, I'll teach you. Yeah, and put you in one of my videos. Mike Starwalker? Mike Starwalker on Instagram. Okay. Okay. All right, and there's a lightsaber giveaway? There is. We're uh, getting really close to 100K on Instagram, and once we hit that, we're going to be doing another lightsaber giveaway. Oh my god! Yeah, because these are really cool lights. They're not the little plastic ones you he get really, at, the, no, at the store. So he's geeking out right now. He yeah. really wants No, one. these are meant for fight choreography and battle. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, they're it's like real lightweight deal. and. Uh, and you said you made. I, I installed the electronics in them, but I get the hilt. This hilt is from Key Sabers. Oh, cool. Right? Yeah. Next best thing to an actual plasma lightsaber here. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. And then, of course, now you're going to show us how a real Jedi Master fights, right? Wow. Oh, I like that. You guys? Wait. I got that. I got the yeah. Careful. Just careful. Yeah. All right, like this. we only yeah. had that little bit of training yesterday. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Stop it. Okay, for more information <laughs> on Mike Skywalker, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code on your screen. Don't do See, it. I can do that, Don't and do then it. like that, too. Stop so. it. All right. Yeah, but first, you can win a pack of Star Wars cupcakes for free. What you need to do and how you can create these fun designs for yourself.
Oh, and there, of course, you can bring Baby Yoda home or you can party with fellow fanatics. All right, now, cupcakes. Yes, indeed. And like we said, you can win some for yourself. There is a whole lot more on SA Live. May the 4th be with you special. Uh, yes, we also want to thank Starline Costumes for our amazing Jedi robes, Darth Maul, and Queen Amidala costumes. Starline is open year-round and are the city's largest costume shop. Go check them out at 1286 Bandera Road. Think of the Force, Fiona. Let the Force come out of you. The force, the Force. Fiona, force. be forceful with the Force. Force yourself to be forceful with the Force. Is this one of your trivia questions? Think of Force 10 from Navarone. Great movie. <laughs>